we'll get straight into the tips. So for a yo-yo, ultimately it's a repeat change of direction and acceleration test. So you need to be really sound with your movement. So you want to start nice and efficient, moving at a slow pace, get really relaxed and focus on your rhythm. So don't get too competitive at the start, just save your energy for the end with the yo-yo and just practice turning and, and when you can try and dissipate the load by turning off one foot and then maybe every change direction that you do, you alternate your sides that you turn off so you're not constantly just loading that your favoured side every time, which could lead to a potential injury. Make sure you do a yo-yo test between now and the draft combine in four weeks' time. That's critical. In terms of technique, practice dropping your body height with your change of direction drills, set up a 20-metre shuttle and practice decelerating early before the cone dropping your body height and then re-accelerating into your efforts. Practice it slow, practice it at higher speeds. Into the 2K time trial, acing is probably the most important. Typically, as we get close to the combine two weeks out, there's no real physical adaptation. We shouldn't be chasing high load at that stage. We want to be tapering your work, so reducing your work, your total body load, so you're not going into the combine fatigue. So if you can, get to Melbourne Park, do the 2K time trial there. So you're familiar with the track. Usually what works for best for uh, most footballers that I've worked with in the past is not starting really hard with their first lap, so not getting caught up with other people and, and competing with them early in your race. We just run at a, a pace that you know is a good speed for you, and then you aim to try and build momentum so every lap you're just shaving off a bit of time and pick your moment. Maybe it's the last 100 metres, 200 metres, when it truly is then a race, and that's where you're Use your competitiveness to um, give yourself that edge, uh, take shave off a few seconds. So run your own race, uh, find a good rhythm early that, you can, that is sustainable for you, and then can pick your moment where you're going to compete, and that's when you want to really race right to the end. From a Jilly point of view, similar to the yo-yo, however, obviously intensity is key. It's not an endurance test, the agility, it's a speed test. So dropping your body height is going to be critical with the change of direction point of view, so making sure you're hinging at the hips and you're dropping that body height so you're able to accelerate and change direction well. You're not getting sloppy and running tall at the points of change of direction. Also, making sure that you're not you know, using your arms crossing over across the body at short, compact arms to help you maintain speed throughout the test. Um, so that's the key. So if you can do it on an indoor surface, then do that. Set it up as, as close to the test as you can. Um, because sometimes people can hit the cones and that can penalize you or you and, and reduce your time or people can slip over and fall over. So making sure you've practiced with the shoes that you're going to wear on the day so you're really f familiar with the test and you've made all your mistakes in training. For our standing jump and your dynamic jump where you get a few strides at it, really important that you're jumping in, in the ball of your foot, not with the weight on your heels. So we want to think of the ball of our feet, our toes or our accelerators, if you think of a car analogy, and if you've got weight on your heels, it's like having one foot on the brakes. You're not going to be able to generate the same amount of force into the ground as using our elastic uh, energy, which is stored in the balls of our foot. So to ensure that you're making the most of that dynamic area of your ankle joint, make sure that you've got a little bit more weight shifted towards the front of your foot compared to the back of your foot with your jumps. So don't stay upright the whole time with the, with the Jump test, make sure you hinge at the hips. That way you'll generate a lot of momentum using your trunk. So as you hinge at the hips and your torso comes forward, it should go down. And then when you're driving up towards this to tap the top of the test, that's where your arms want to be reaching as high as you can. Little accessories to help with that thoracic mobility. So making sure we're not hunched over uh, because your, your abdominals won't be able to transmit as much force into the legs when we're in this hunch position. So it'll allow you to be really vertical and tall through abdominals, um, stretching your upper back and doing a lot of rotations and mobility. Um, check out our YouTube channel. I've posted a lot of thoracic upper back mobility drills to help with that. Um, so that will help you um, produce power as well as the overspeed drills in our power playlist as well. Then in terms of our 20 meter test, we want to make sure you nail the start. So that first five meters is also measured, the 10 meter mark and then the 20. So Practicing your first three steps is critical from a static position like you'll do on the test. So your rate of force development will be key. How fast you can generate force, i.e. acceleration, will be really, really key for the 20-meter test. Practice uh, your starts at least 
twice a week. Uh, and the perfect time to do that if you're still playing footy is before training, um, where you load up that front foot. And imagine when you do that first step that you're trying to put a hole in the ground. That's how much force you're putting into the ground. So that should project you forward in that motion. Short, compact arms is really, really important. So we're getting that co-contraction through our trunk and making sure you, you're really punching the ground with speed. So you're using your hips, not just your lower legs. So putting good force in the ground every strike and stay over because for the most part, certainly up until at least the 10, for most of you, maybe even it's 20, you won't be going upright straight away, increasing air resistance. So you want to try and make the most of your power in your legs by hinging over and staying leaning forward in that position. So you're putting force straight into the ground and also behind you to project you in, in a forwards motion. From a technique point of view, like I mentioned, load up that front foot and make sure you put a good amount of weight through that front foot. Use your arms, short compact arms and stay hinging over your hips. So really lead with your body, upper body first. And then from a familiarity point of view, practice, practice, practice is key. 